Hi everyone, Holly from Diamond Painting Addict. Today is going to be a slightly different video setup. So this video is for diamond painting or diamond painting art beginners. It's basically a beginner's guide to diamond painting. And I will explain in this video what diamond painting is, how you go about doing it, how you set up um, and so on and so forth. So I've just received this diamond painting in the post and this is a full drill um, square diamond painting. Now, when we talk about diamond paintings, you can get two types of diamond paintings. So one will be a full, um, a full drill. So basically it will be completely uh, filled with, cam like the canvas will be completely filled with drills. And the second is a partial. So that means that there's areas within the canvas you don't actually stick any of the drills to, or diamonds, depending on, on which name that you refer to. So this is a full drill. Um, I started off doing partials, but I literally did one or two when I first started and then that was it. I was like full drill all the way. I also started on um, the round drills, which I probably would recommend if you're brand new to diamond painting, I would recommend doing the round diamonds first and then go on to square. Now there's two reasons for, reasons for that. One is the, the round diamonds, because they are slightly bigger than the square diamonds, the paintings don't tend to take so long to do. Um, they're also not as finicky because you don't have to kind of you know, um, square them up and put them down, you know, pretty much sort of exact in the square. So the square diamonds can be sometimes quite fiddly. Now, one of the reasons why we recommend doing, or one of the reasons why people like doing square drills is purely because um, some opinions are that the square drills give a different and better finish so because there aren't any gaps of the canvas around with a square drill, because every single drill is butted up next to each other, um, you get a, a more detailed finish. Whereas with the round drills, they because you have got an area all the way around um, the round drill where the canvas is, you sometimes lose a very slight bit of sharpness. Now I'm going to show you the difference with the round drill to square drill. So. This is what uh, round drills look like. So just like that, oh, they're falling out. And square drills, if you bear with, look like, um, where's my square? Where did I put it? Here we go. Right, square drills look like this. You get a nice colour that you can see really well. Okay, so you can see there that they are square. So very, very different. Now, I much prefer square purely because I like the finish. Um, but it's completely up to you what you do. It's There's no you know, um, squares are better than rounds. Some people find rounds better than squares. It's just down to personal opinion. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this canvas and I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I take in order to get set up and to start my diamond painting. So without further ado, let's get into this. So this diamond painting, as I explained earlier, is a a full drill and it's from Row Diamonds. I get pretty much all of my diamond paintings from Row Diamonds because most of mine are um, customs. Okay. So when I say that most of mine are customs, what that means is I send this supplier a picture of what I would like her to turn into a diamond painting. Now there are plenty of sellers, um, places like eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, um, who have 
already got diamond paintings there ready to sell so you don't have to send photos in or pictures or anything like that they're just you know ready to buy off the shop floor and then get sent to you now there are some sellers that are better than others um some of the sellers like home fun um ever moment dis paint azqsd um i would say they probably are the four main ones that people tend to go for and Mian I think I've used as well and they've been okay. There are also sellers that aren't as good. Now one of those is Zooistar and people seem to have real issues with Zooistar so I would steer clear. Now if this is something that you're interested in doing I would highly recommend that you go onto a group, onto a Facebook group and um, get yourself um, added on and you can ask loads of questions and recommendations of who they think that would be the best seller. So let's get into this diamond painting. So generally your paintings will come in either a box like this or every moment are renowned for um, your paintings being uh, in a tube and I think Actually, I probably would prefer them being in a tube purely because um, they're just a little bit more protected. So in every single diamond painting, you get every single thing that you need in order to start your diamond painting. So in every diamond painting, you get your tool kit. And in your tool kit, you get a drill pen, just like this one. This one has uh, a three placer, so that can um, help with you know getting your drills down quicker if you've got one area that's all one color they come with tweezers which are are usually used in square drills but they are really really handy if you misplace a drill or you need to spin a drill around you'll just you know use it to either take drills off your painting or you know just move them into place you will get a a drill tray that looks similar to this oh, it's a bit stuck to my hands uh, they can sometimes come in green, um, they generally are white or green, and they do differ in sizes and shapes. And then you will get your glue, uh, well not glue, it's wax actually. So your wax is, most of the waxes and most of the diamond paintings come like this, but uh, row diamonds actually send theirs in a, a little um, jar like this, a little plastic container which is cute. So, and this actually also comes with a nine placer. So what you can do is you can take off your three placer and pop in your nine placer. So either nine or six, something like that. But they're all much for muchness. I, will, I only tend to use three placers because I find that any more than that, you can't really get your precision when you put your, bike, your diamonds down. So that is your basic kit that you get with all your diamond paintings. The other thing you get is your canvas and this canvas is a lion. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. This is what I've ordered for my custom and you get your drills and they all come bagged up and they all do differ slightly with what they look like when they come in. So the first thing I do is I always check my canvas first and when you've got a canvas rolled there are ways of unrolling it and flattening it out and I'll explain why in a moment. So if you've got a good company generally they will roll your canvas around a noodle like this because it just gives it a bit more stability and stops it from crunching. Now when you move that when you um, undo your canvas it is always recommended that the the paper on top and it can either come like this or it can come in like a clear film but it works on on both so what I do is I very slowly unroll it and I will use the bottom of my desk for this just be, so it can be rolled or unrolled carefully now you need to get this flattened out and the best way to do that is by taking a corner of your diamond painting 
and be very very careful when you peel this back because sometimes you get the glue so if it doesn't peel back very easily just um, rub the side and the heat will put down the adhesive so the heat will actually transfer to the adhesive and it will um, put the adhesive down back onto the canvas which will then allow you to pull back your protective paper so what you would do is you would pull your paper back like this and then you would flatten it back out and then you do the same for this side you pull your paper down and then you would flatten it back down okay so some of my glue seems to have come away there so i've just flattened it back down again okay so then you do exactly the same the other side and then very carefully just be very careful to unroll this because sometimes you can distort the adhesive So take this corner here, okay, yeah, that's all good, and then we cut that there, and then do the same for this one. There we are, so that actually helps to flatten your canvas. So now you've got a canvas that is pretty much all flat. Take that, and then I will do the same for this side. Okay. Right. So, the art of diamond painting is um, an art where you place drills, corresponding drills, on um, to a canvas that is tacky, that has adhesive on it. So I'll show you the drills in a moment, but every single symbol, I'll show you one here. Oops. Every single symbol on here equates to a symbol on your actual painting. Now, these here have DMC codes. So every single symbol equates to one of these DMC codes, which is a colour. Okay, so I'm just going to have a bit more of a play with this canvas just to make sure that it's as flat as it can be. Um, I think it's always good to do that. It's always good to double check your canvas and make sure that none of your glue is coming up or anything like that as well. Now, sometimes in diamond paintings, you get things called air bubbles or rivers. Now, most diamond companies tend to have um, really good quality canvases but there are the select few that don't so what you would do in um, the case where you had a bit of the glue that has raised is you would take a knife I know it sounds a bit crazy and where you've got your river going along one way so I've got a couple here so I've got one here I've got one here one here one there one there you just very carefully slice through the adhesive not hard enough that you go through the canvas but just enough that you create some um, air movement in there and then you would take your drill pen and you would just as if you were coloring in you would just color and what this does is this flattens down your rivers 
and makes the canvas um, adhesive flat so that your drills then sit on it flat. Now, if you don't do this, what you will end up with is an area of your drills that are slightly raised and then that will come out in the finish of your painting. So that is just a really easy fix and you don't ruin the glue, just go over it, it makes it really flat, it's no problem at all, just blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, it's, still, it's still there, the adhesive is still there, it's still no problem, but I'm just going to show you what the drill field looks like, now I've got that open like that, so, I don't know if you can see that very well, so that is the drill field, and they do, again, they do vary, but this is very, very clear. It's one of the reasons why I really like Bow Diamonds because they have a very clear um, drill uh, area. So, so that is the first thing that I do when I get my diamond painting. I check it. Uh, I tend to get like as like many rivers as I can out of it because I just like to know that it's ready to go. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. Right. Once my canvas has been checked, the next thing to do is check that all your drills are there. So I'm just going to open up this bag. And in a lot of companies, you get an inventory sheet. Now, some inventory sheets will say that um, you have so many bags of a colour for that painting, and others, such as Evermoment, will weigh their diamonds. They always give you a percentage more. But this one here, I'll just show you this. This has um, the code, and then it has the DMC code. The amount of diamonds that you need in that colour, so the number of diamonds you need to complete the painting. And within that, how many bags of that colour you have. So the first thing, the fundamental thing that you do, is you double check your canvas um, to make sure that you have the um, right amount of drills as you do in order to complete that painting. Now what's important um, is to do that as soon as you get your painting, because if you put your painting to one side and don't touch it for six months, and then go back to one of your sellers and saying, I'm really sorry, I'm missing a couple of colours, can you please send them out? You know, they might get a bit iffy with, with that and you could end up having a painting that you can't complete because you've got no colours. So let me just show you the thumbnail and this painting is absolutely beautiful. So this is my lion. I absolutely love this. And this is, like I said, it was a custom. So I had a picture sent in to this company and I got them to do it. So... Your bags of drills will come with the DMC code written on them. Now, some are clearer to see than others. And what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have got the right amount of drills for your painting. So I'm just going to take my pen and I am going to go down and just do some inventory. What I will do is I will fast forward this bit because it's pretty boring, so I won't make you sit through all of this, but I will show you the first couple and then we'll go from there. So I need number 154, Okay, so. so this is colour 310, which is black. So I've got three bags, one, two, three. So you can see on this inventory sheet that I should have three bags of 310. So yeah, I've got three bags of 310, so I'm ticked. Uh, 918, I should have 11 bags of 918.
Okay, so the inventory has all been checked. I am just missing one colour of um, one DMC code. So on the 780, I've only got four and I should have five. But that's the great thing about um, buying from a seller that's in the UK. She can just literally ship me out another colour and it'll be here within two days. So once I've done all my inventory, uh, if I'm not actually using my diamond painting straight away, if I've got another one that I'm doing, what I will do is I will put all of my my diamonds with my inventory sheet, so I know uh, which diamond painting it relates to, in one of these Ziploc bags. So I'll just show you here. So on this Ziploc bag, I have got uh, what the diamond painting is and the seller. And that will keep them all safe because what I want to do is I want to make sure my canvas is as flat as possible. So I will then lay that out flat and then I'll have my, my drills or diamonds separate to that. Now, once um, you, you get to the point where you want to actually start your diamond painting, you need to organise all of these drills into container boxes. Now, the containers that I use are these. So, these are from Harbour Freight and you get 24 of these containers in one of these boxes. Now, there's a few reasons why I like using these. Um, one reason is because you can get quite a few bags, I think 3,000 bags of drills in, uh, or 3,000 drills, sorry, so uh, three bags of 1,000 drills in these containers, and they also have a very good closing mechanism. They literally click lock into place. Um, they are super organised, and I have like 24 boxes of these and I can just keep them all organised and know what I'm doing. So, I am going to open up one of these. Um, and we are going to put the drills into the container boxes. this all up. Oh. Well that didn't go plan. Like a million boxes everywhere now. Okay, so um, what I like to do is I like to label my boxes with DMC codes so that if I ever have spares and I run out of a colour or I need a colour, I know exactly which box to go to. So with my diamonds, what I do is I put the symbol uh, in uh, on the left and then I put the DMC code on the right. So I know exactly... Um, what colour relates to which symbol? So I know that um, the colour uh, B200, which or B5200, my mistake, sorry, which is white, is colour B, or symbol B. So this is a DMC code sheet, and I will uh, link this in the description box for you. And these I have loads of because I like to make sure that every single box is labelled. If I don't have one of these stickers, what I will do is I will individually uh, write it on my box. So, let me just show you, and this is another process I'm not gonna do the whole way as well, I will just do um, a few of them, and then I'll just go on to the next thing, otherwise this video is gonna be 100 years long. So I'll take my box, and this is 3371, so I'll stick 
3371 in my box. One. Two. Three. Okay, so 3371. I then find that number on my DMC code and that's the number there, 3371. So I'll stick that on the right hand side. I've got some random letter attached to my, <laughs> some random number attached to my hand. So 3371 is K, so that's the symbol K. So I will take some stickers that I've got, and um, these are ones that I have received over time with different diamond paintings. So um, <clears throat> if you don't have any stickers, then you can just buy them on Amazon. There's loads of them. So this is letter K. So I'm just going to, oops, whack that on my box, boom boom, and that's the first one done. 3371 is symbol K. And what I will do is I will just, 817, carry on. Boxing these all up. Six one two, six one two, six one two. I have how many? One. So this one here, I've got one. Ah, oh, bollocks. Hang on. Bear with. Never a good plan to throw your diamonds all over your table, but you know, shit happens. Jeez. Oh, Actually, while I while I've got this here, this is um talking about tips and tricks and things like that. This is a tip that I have for you. Now, um, I sometimes, more often than not, if I've got a big area of diamonds um, that is one symbol, I like to use my three-placer. Now, this here is a bigger tray that I bought from Amazon. And again, I will link this in the description box because if you pop your diamonds in there and then you shake them left to right, what they do is they all end up um, lining up. So if you just very gently move them all down, you have lines and lines and lines and lines, which then makes it a lot easier with your three placer. I haven't got any wax in there at the moment, so it won't work, but you can actually click into your diamonds and you can pick three up at a time. And I find that a massive time saver. So for a tip for your diamond painting, if you can get a much bigger tray, drill tray like this one, um, it will save you stacks and stacks of time. And now I have completely forgotten what number this was. Real. Six one one. Okay, six one two. I don't have a six one two one there. Oh, we've got a 612 on here, 612. I think it's 612. Um, I think I actually at this point have no idea right now. Um, oh well, 612, and I'm guessing it is 612 because the I don't know if you can see, but on the inventory. 
um, 612 is actually kind of a, a khaki, greeny, browny, grey colour. And that's a bit of a giveaway that actually it probably does relate to that number. So that's and and sign. Now, another tip I have is that this is a very laborious process, especially if you've got a hundred million colours. Now, what I recommend doing is um, if you have got more than, I think I can only fit six bags into here of these, these size bags. If you have more than that, instead of using another container, so you'll end up with, you know, five of these for one painting. What you need to do is get yourself a Ziploc bag like this, a bit smaller. So smaller than the bigger one, so one similar to this size. And any extras that you have, pop the extras in this bag. So label it with what the diamond painting is that it relates to. And what that will do is it will free up um, a lot of your storage. I use my storage quite conservatively. So I don't like to have loads and loads of um, one of one colour in um in, in my storage, so I'm not going to have, you know, four or five small box containers of B5200, which are whites. I'm going to have one storage box of that, and then the rest of those are just going to go into one of these smaller Ziploc bags. So that's just another tip to a um, speed things up, because the other thing is, is it is time consuming to put a million bags into these small boxes. If you can just shove them all into a Ziploc bag, the ones that you're not using, then happy days. It, it literally does save you so much more time. So I am just going to carry on with this. So 722. So I actually made um, a Ziploc bag for this earlier. And um, this is the one that I am using. So I've got what it's called, the Lion. And that it's a 60 by 60. So if I I've got on to if for 722, I've got 10 bags of 722. So I'm actually only going to be able to fit six bags into one of these containers, and the rest I will just chuck into this Ziploc bag. So 722 is C. So I go to my DMC and look for 722, which is here. Just stick that on there. And then it is, let's see.
Right, so I am just going to put these in order quickly, just so I know what I am working with. So, um, Right, so what I usually do is I do numbers, then I do, uh, sorry, I excuse me, I do letters, then I do numbers, and then I do all of the funky little um, symbols that you get. So I've got a plus here as well. So that's how I do it. So I will do letters, then numbers, then I do um, the symbols. So I am just going to whack this in order. So that is all of my drills organised into two and a half boxes. It does mean that if I've got another painting I can use this half here because it's completely clear so I can use that half for another painting. Um, so that's all the drills sorted. So it's letters, numbers, symbols. So I'm just going to put those away and then what I'm going to do is grab the canvas that I'm working on at the moment and we're going to go through some tips and tricks. number of tips and tricks that I have found that work for me um, over the time that I've been doing diamond painting. So one, which I've explained um, before, is get yourself a much bigger tray. You can put a lot more drills in there. Uh, if you've got a big area of the same uh, colour, you can use a three-placer. Okay, so that's my first tip. The second trick is if you have an area on your canvas where the adhesive has gone you've got no sticky get yourself one of these which is a prit stick and this is like double sided so what you'll do is you'll go over the area that hasn't got any adhesive obviously underneath this paper and that will create an adhesive for you okay so that's the second trick the third is, on occasion, you will get diamonds that are very static and you'll know when you get them because they um, pop out everywhere and sometimes they're just overly dry or whatever. So they will be a bit of a nightmare to put in these boxes. So my, my second tip is get yourself some dryer, seat, dryer sheets that you can get from Tesco or Sainsbury's or any grocery store and pop a couple um, of dryer, like just tiny, you don't even need a couple, just one little centimetre by centimetre square of dryer sheet and pop that in your container. Give it a bit of a shake and that will get rid of the static. Right, um, is that number three? Number four is sometimes you get your drills that actually stick together and they are a little bit of a nightmare. If that happens, one thing you can do is um, sometimes you'll get some trays like this. Pop your drills 
in your tray pop the other tray on top and then press down and what that will do is that will cause the drills to pop away from each other and then you have drills that you can use easily now that was number four i think so number five is on occasion also you get oil you get drills that are really oily now i would suggest um popping them in a baby wipe and going over and over and over them so pop a baby wipe on your on your table pop a few drills in and then scrunch up the baby wipe so that it almost looks like a, a dim sum from a chinese restaurant and then just massage them and that will take all the oil residue off them and that will make them a lot easier the other tip i have or trick i have is if you have a catastrophic issue with your containers that fall on the floor and then pop open, one thing you can do is pop a sock or a pair of tights or pantyhose, as they say in America, over the um, hose part of your hoover and go over your drills on the floor using that and you will be able to gather all of your drills without them going up into the hoover. So that is tip number five. What was tip number six? I had one. Oh, right. Okay. So this has happened a few times to people and this is an absolute nightmare. If you, by any chance, by accident, find yourself um, having a piece of paper get stuck to your adhesive, um, you need to make sure that you get that piece of paper off because otherwise it's just going to ruin your painting. You're not going to be able to know what your symbols are. So one tip is get yourself some baby wipes and go over the painting with those baby wipes. Those baby wipes will lift up the paper and you will still have the stickiness. Now, if you don't have the stickiness, which occasionally does happen, uh, I mentioned before that this, uh, the prick, 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 sorry, pricked, <laughs> Uh, excuse me uh this pricked um i don't know what you call this roller i guess and just go over the area that's lost its stickiness and it will be really tacky again it's completely see-through and you'll be able to carry on with your painting so um is that everything for my tips and tricks oh yeah okay so i was going to show you the light pad in a minute um the other thing you can do is you can get yourself some DMC codes and any spares that you have, uh, you can just code up those um, your drill boxes that you have. And then if you have any missing, then you can just literally, um, you know, go refer to your um, container that you've got that's already uh, organised with a, <coughs> a DMC number and you can use um, those spares that you have um blah, 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 blah. with regards to using stuff so the tools that you use i i used to use a i'm trying to find it now i don't know where i put it but i had a drill pen that i used to use i bought a new drill pen and i didn't really like didn't really like it, didn't get on with it. And I went straight back to the ones that you get with the diamond paintings. In all fairness, I have to say that they are probably the best to use. Now, some will just come naked like this and others um, from places such like as Huacan or Evermoment will uh, have this grippy on them already. But if you don't have it, then they're like a pound from Amazon and you can just buy yourself some grippies and it just makes the um that it just makes the process of diamond painting a lot easier on your hands so is that my tips and tricks done i think it is so we've covered what happens to your canvas if you have uh rivers or if the canvas lifts now if you have if you have an an issue where you are um, folding back your paper to straighten out your canvas and you can see there's some areas where the glue is just slightly the adhesive is just slightly lifted Put your paper back down and go over it with a rolling pin. A rolling pin will really, really help. That comes back to another tip. Right, 
sometimes you will have popping drills so drills that don't 100% sit completely together with each other and they are slightly raised get your rolling pin again and go over the drills that you have already put down and that will pop them back into place in fact every single time you do a section and you go to put your painting away it's always a good idea to do that just go over your drills and make sure that they're all snug and and together and and all are um you know hitting the adhesive in the area that they need to so then that will refrain from any of them falling off when you store your paintings please store them flat because if you store them um, in areas where they are raised in one area or they're not completely flat, you do run the risk of having your adhesive become um, unstable is probably a good way. And that's how you create rivers. So you could get the most perfect canvas in the post and it'd be absolutely fine. And then you just store it wrong or you store it where a corner is up and not quite straight. And then immediately you've just put a river through your um, canvas which I have done so I am telling you from experience that that is what happens I had a canvas that was absolutely perfect from ever moment and I ruined it because I didn't store it properly so that is my other tip and trick so what I'm going to do is I am just going to uh, change the angle and I'm going to show you what the difference between having a light box is and not having a light box bear in my moment Right, my diamond painting is um, a 60 by 60 and I have an A4 sized light box. Now, if I were to show you, and I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit, it doesn't matter that it's up here. This is what my canvas looks like when I haven't got any light on it. Now, look at the difference when I put a light box on it. Look how, how much clearer the uh, symbols are on your painting so what you do when you have opened your canvas and you're ready to go is it doesn't matter whether you start from the bottom right the top left the middle wherever you feel most comfortable every single letter corresponds to so if i show you um you've got okay so turn it around so i've got a's here and i've also got a's on my diamond painting what i'm going to do is pop one drill on each symbol that is an A on this diamond painting. So you pop a few into your tray. Okay, you take your wax. And then what you need to do is you need to um, fill. I don't know if that's coming out very well. Uh, hello. Okay, can you see that slight hole in, in the nib right here? So that is where you fill your wax. So what you would do is you would just press in a couple of times just to get some wax up. You don't have to press very hard and pop your drills in your drill tray. Give them a bit of a shimmy. Uh, if I put the light on, it might help. There we go. So give them a bit of a shimmy. What you want is for the facets of your drills to be pointing upwards and for the flat area to be pointing downwards um, because that is the area that you put onto your painting. Now, um, I have just pulled that up. Can you see that that's flat? Okay, so what you do is you take your drill and I've got an A here, so I will pop my A there. So I'm just going to show you uh, three placing diamonds. So um, around this area I've got quite a few A's. So what I've done is I've shimmied my drills up so they are all in one line. I will take my wax on um, and my drills on, oh, sorry, and my drills on the bottom of my pen. You'll have to excuse me because I've zoomed in. I don't even know where my camera is at the moment. And then what I'll do is I will just pop those down. Boom. So that's three in a line. Take my pen and grab another three. And that's another three. So when you have an area where you've got a lot of the same um, number or letter, I would very, very... Um, highly recommend that you use your three placer on the bottom of your pen because it just makes um, doing your diamond painting so much quicker I mean by all means if if you want to just place them individually that's absolutely fine that's no problem at all but this really really helps 
so I've covered what I do when I get my drills and if I'm not using or what I what I um, do when I get my painting and if I'm not going to paint um, it straight away what I do with my drills with regards to storage I've gone through inventory I've gone through um, putting the drills in the individual boxes I've gone through tips and trips tips and tricks sorry and I've also gone through the canvas and the um, advantages and disadvantages with having a light box. So I trust that helps to all of you uh, beginner diamond painters out there. This is an absolutely fabulous art. I absolutely love doing it. I'm completely hooked. I love the organ organisational side of it. I love um, just, you know, the doing it, the creating something. And it's just so... Um, therapeutic what I tend to do is I pop on an audiobook and I just get cracking and I can do it for hours and hours and hours all day every day I absolutely love doing it so um, please check out some of my other videos because I have some organizational videos I've got time-lapse videos I have unboxing videos um, but I trust that helps and I look forward to seeing you soon guys thanks very much bye